and welcome to the RATP Innovation Series, where you get the latest trends, technologies, and developments in urban mobility. The entire series is available for you to watch on YouTube or listen to on SoundCloud. Simply look for the RATP Innovation Series playlist. Today we will discuss an exciting multinational project to collect, aggregate, and analyze data which could transform the way we understand our cities. Introducing Smart Curbs, a joint project of MIT and the RATP for collecting data directly from the Paris sidewalks. To tell us about this project, we are joined by Thibaut Durand, project manager of the Smarter City program at RATP, and Ariana Salazar-Miranda, calling us from Boston. You are a PhD student in urban information systems at MIT. We will also have a recorded message from Carlo Ratti, director of the MIT Sensible City Lab. But Thibaut, let me start with you. I thought that curbsides were simply where I get off the sidewalk. Why do we need to smarten the curbs? Well, you have to know that um, over the last century, curbside was traditionally used for car parking. So 64% of the curbside is for is dedicated to car and, and motorized vehicles parking. So it's a huge amount of, of the city, actually. And uh, as a mobility operator, as the main mobility operator of Paris, RATP uh, has witnessed over the last decade the increase in new mobilities, micro mobilities, uh, shared mobilities, soft mobilities too, which people call now active mobility. And the combination of these mobilities with uh, the political choices that have been made uh, by, by the city of Paris uh, makes that uh, it's really complex. It's a really complex uh, system. You have to know that the city of Paris uh, decided to cut down on 50% of, of core spaces uh, by 2026. And we have now to rethink and remanage uh, the, the curbside and help the city remanage this place. Also, as a mobility operator, uh, it has a great impact and a direct impact on our, our network system majority of it is the burst network system. And this is why we have now to rethink the curbside to improve our, our burst network and the quality of service for our, our customers and our, uh, for, the, for the citizens, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so a lot is going on uh, on the curbsides, much more than we may realize. And why is this project interesting for an elite university on the other side of the planet? Let's hear from Carlo Ratti about the MIT involvement, involvement in this Parisian project. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. So great pleasure to be here with you today. And, uh, you know, I was asked to comment on why we are so excited about the project we are doing with uh, ERATP on the curb and on uh, monitoring the curb. And well, you know, at MIT, we've been working a lot on the curb. We see, we see the curb as kind of the next, the future urban frontier. The curb is changing a lot. Uh, you know, the curb is changing because of micromobility, because of e-vehicles. We need to use it as a charging position because of, uh, you know, the reconfiguration of streets. We've seen a lot during COVID. Uh, it's changing also because of dynamic occupation by terraces and other activities. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's really like a, a piece of real estate that's going to be used less for parking and more for many other uh, type of activities. And, and so understanding better the curb, quantifying that using artificial intelligence in order to understand what is going on today and better plan for a different tomorrow is really something that uh, we find very exciting and we are very, very happy to be able to pioneer this for the first time in the world uh, in the city of Paris. And uh, I will uh, add a final small thing is that many cities around the world, you know, I, I heard this from the mayor of Los Angeles and others are really thinking about uh, the fact that they need to start uh, better understand mapping and using the curb and while nobody has done yet so this this kind of is the premiere what we are running now the test we are running with RATP uh, in order to better understand this very important uh, asset in cities and a plan for its future look forward to see you next time next year in person in Paris Hopefully in person, hopefully in Paris. And you just answered one of my questions, whether it's been done before anywhere else in the world. And I, we were just told by Carlo that, no, this is the first time this is being uh, done. 
so Ariana, you're joining us from uh, all the way from Boston. I understand you're bringing here together these different technologies like IoT and data sciences. So how does this actually work? What kind of devices do you install? What kind of data do you collect? What kind of insights can you draw out of it? That's right. Thank you so much for having us. So let me tell you a little bit about the project. Our project combines sensors and artificial intelligence methods, like Carlo just said, such as computer vision and machine learning, to understand how curbs and streets more broadly are used in real time. And really our motivation was that despite the fact that streets and curbs are key to cities, because we know that they contribute to the social life, we know that they contribute to social interactions, business activity, we still lack consistent ways to measure how people use streets in real time. So the goal of of this project was to develop a methodology to gather data on human activity and transportation modes that captures both its intensity and type, and that could be deployed at scale for whole cities. So our approach works in the following way. First, we equip a bus with a camera that captures real-time images of Parisian streets. Then we use machine learning and computer vision techniques to process these images and classify them depending on how people are using space. For example, we can distinguish between a person walking by from a person sitting in a terrace or a person waiting for the bus to come. And importantly, our algorithms conduct the classification in the sensor, which means that we do not store nor retain any of the raw images that we collect. And what this allows us to do is to obtain a rich set of metrics on street use while at the same time respecting individual privacy. Let me tell you a little bit about the hardware that we use to collect these images in real time. So as part of our collaboration, we designed a 20 by 10 centimeter sensor with a camera that can be placed in moving vehicles. And the sensor is capable of capturing real time images of its immediate surroundings. It then locally analyzes this data and stores time stamped and geocoded data on the activities that it collects. Okay. Ariana and Thibault, you are the first in the world to do it. Do you think this, the results of the data you're collecting and the analysis might be useful for other cities around the world, like Los Angeles we just heard about? Or do you think it's very specific for every city that would need to go through this process by themselves to find their own specific in, information and, and, and analysis? Yeah, so I think understanding how space in cities is used has a long tradition in urban studies. However, the traditional way that we've used to measure how people use streets is using observations or or surveys. And although this approach is very rich, it's also quite local and very difficult to scale. So our goal with this project was to move one step further and understand not only what areas are the most active, but also the types of activities that are taking place in curbs and streets. And so I think there are probably common patterns in human activity and transportation modes that are common across cities like Los Angeles or Paris. But of course, to document them, we have to measure them. And the good thing is that most cities in the world have a dense network of buses and transportation infrastructure that we can leverage and use to collect these data. So in fact, we've began discussions, internal discussions among RATP and the MIT Sensible City Lab on how to expand this effort beyond Paris. Imagine how amazing it would be to create a measure of street activity and uses in real time for many, many cities around the world. You had me at hello. Maybe last question uh, for Thibault. What kind of concrete implications might this uh, data analysis have on the future offer of the RATP in Paris? Do you think that might be taken uh, into account when rethinking and readjusting your offer of public transport? Or is this not? part of the exercise? Well, at RATP, we think that there is a great connection between the curbside and a bus network. So by the conclusions of this study and, well, the the results of this first experiment in Paris, we will try to understand uh, what are the links between between the two and and try to adapt our our bus offer and uh, and try to, 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 to adapt to the city demand, to the people demand. 
Sounds good. The worst part of my job is that I have to announce when we're actually out of time, even if it's just getting more and more interesting. So let me therefore thank once again Thibaut, Carlo and Ariana. Let me also thank you, our viewers and listeners. If you found this useful and interesting, I invite you to check our entire playlist of the RATP Innovation Series on YouTube and on SoundCloud. We cover topics like Africa tech, rail tech, urban aviation, EU startup politics and much more. So we'll see you in our next episodes. Thank you.